Well, there's no doubt that Job is a really big book. And I've been thinking about how to preach this through. My initial thought was we need just to sort of see the main things in Job and do a, a preaching series that doesn't go through every little bit of Job. But then as I've been going through, trying to go through more of the little bits, we realise there's so much in Job that's so helpful to us. But I don't want us to be preaching through Job beyond Christmas. Um, so the sort of way I think that we might uh, that might be helpful is just for me to do some short videos. Uh, I, I'm following through our reading plan. I don't know if I'll be able to do this all the time, but I should try and do it. Uh, that might help us to get into some of the detail in Job. Uh, and then our sermons on Sunday will be a bit more of the big picture and hopefully those two things will work together really well for those of us who who follow it through. So I'm going to pick it up um, after chapter three which is where we were on Sunday and just um, just quickly talk through uh, chapters, chapter four and five uh, which is Eliphaz's um, speech and uh, by the way this, this isn't going to be polished or anything I'm just going to speak sort of as the camera sort of as I read the bible so you'll probably get a lot on my forehead but I hope it's still um, uh, uh, bearable. Um, so this is Eliphaz the, the Temanite. We meet him and his friends back in verse 11 of chapter 2. Remember they came to, they were Job's friends, they came to comfort him and Eliphaz actually is the interesting one of the three because he's the one that cues, clues us into the fact that these are wise men. Uh, Taman was an Edomite town and in Jeremiah uh, 49 verse 7 um, Jeremiah speaks of the wisdom of Edom. So there's something in the in in the scriptures that records that Edom, for there are lots of other things that are true about it. And one of the things we know is that Edom, the Edomites, were quite arrogant. But maybe that would fit with them feeling that they were very wise, understanding the world. So here's uh, uh, Eliphaz, who is from there. Build at the shoe height. Actually, that connects us back to Genesis 25. I'm sure it's mentioned. Uh, there in Abraham's family, and uh, Zophar the Namathite uh, goes back to Genesis chapter three. So that clues us in back to who Job was. He was one of the gr- he was the greatest man in the east, wasn't he? So he's to the east of where Abraham and his family are, and he's a great man. And here are his friends, and Eliphaz, this wise man, comes. Uh, they've sat with him. They've listened to chapter three, and all that uh, Job has cried out. Uh, uh, wanting to die they've been really shocked even just to see his appearance 12 verse uh, 2 verse 12 Uh, and now he he speaks and uh, he speaks for quite a long time doesn't he he's quite gentle i guess um uh, as he begins to challenge job having listened to what uh, he's uh, said so look at verse is 1 to 11 that's the first uh, thing that he really sort of says to to job he says look uh Verse two, okay, can I please have a word? Can I butt in? Can I just say something? But please don't don't lose your rag with me. I just want to say something. It's a kind of gentle way in, isn't it? Uh, and then he says, in essence, look, Job, you used to be a, one of us, a wise man, and you used to help other people when they were suffering. But now you're suffering, you're finding it hard. You, you can't sort of take the medicine that you've dished out to other people. Job, you know how the world works like we do. You've got to be consistent with how we understand the world. And what is that? Verse 6, is not your fear of God your confidence and the integrity of your ways your hope? So look, if you're blameless, Job, if you're one who fears God, you know that God's blessing will come because God blesses the blameless. And verse 7, look, the innocent don't perish. God is just. He won't bring uh, disaster upon the innocent. Verse 8, look, we reap what we sow. And those who sow in wickedness, well, verse 9, by the breath of God they will perish and the blast of his anger will consume. They might even be lion-like in their strength. There are lots of lions in verse 10 to, 12, to 11, but they won't succeed uh, against God. So be consistent. Look, see what's going on, Joe. Be honest. Be consistent with what you know the world to be like. God doesn't bring great disaster on the innocent. So that's a a gentle challenge to Job, isn't it? For Job to sort of consider his life and to consider what's going on. 
And then in verse 12 to chapter 5, verse 7, I think, there's another section where he's saying, look, you know, be, be realistic about uh, the way the world is. Don't think that you're kind of going to be an exception to the rule, I guess. And there's a bit of a strange bit here, isn't there? It's quite mystic, it gets quite mystical in verse 12 uh, onwards, that he has some vision, some mystical experience that gets us all very excited for what he's going to uh, reveal to us. And maybe we, we, having gone through chapters 1 and 2, think that Eliphaz is going to reveal something of what's gone on in heaven that we know about as the readers of this book, but that uh, Job and the counsellors don't know about. But no, it's verse 17 is the thing. Uh, can mortal man be in the right before God? Can a man be pure before his maker? In other words, no one is righteous. There's no one who's uh, pure before God. Even the angels, verse 18, how much more those who dwell in houses of clay. And there's a, here's a really, uh, really powerful description of uh, our fragility as human beings, uh, isn't that? It's often the way with the, the comforters, there are great sort of moments and highlights in their speeches. And here's a, a really powerful one, isn't it? A house of clay, foundation is in the dust, crushed like the moth. Um, we have moths in our house and uh, we fight them and it's not an even battle. Uh, they can be a bit flighty, but once you've got them, there's no contest is there. And that's this picture. We're like that. We're just like a moth. We can get up in the morning and fly around. But by the evening, we're gone. We're like a tent. We've pitched a tent and then someone's tripped over one of the guy ropes and the whole thing comes crashing down. That's the picture there, isn't it? Of our human life. Well, can mortal and immortal ever really connect, Job? No, uh, they, they can't. Be realistic about your life. Don't look for some kind of mediator, verse 1 of chapter 5, who will answer you in heaven. You know, where, where, where are you, immortal, going to get access to heaven to, kind of, to bring your complaint? Uh, come on, Job, be realistic. And in a sense, say the serenity pr prayer. Um, accept those things that you can't change, verse 2. Surely vexation kills the fool and jealousy slays the simple. I've seen a fool take root, but suddenly I cursed his dwelling, or suddenly I saw that his dwelling was cursed. So look, don't get hot into the colour. We know how the world works. Do good and good things will happen. If you're bad, things bad things will happen. Don't get angry about it. That's the way it is. So deal with it. We live in a world of trouble. Uh, verse uh, uh, 6 to 7. That's the way things are. We're in a cursed world under God and bad things happen. And then in verse 8 uh, to uh, 16, uh, he asks Job to be, to be humble. His, his recommendation is, look, um, be humble before God. We know, verse 11, that God helps the humble. So don't try and be too clever. God's too amazing. He's incredible, isn't he? He does great things, unsearchable, marvellous things, gives rain on the earth. We can't even fathom this thing called water, liquid, that can be a gas, that can be ice and the solid. God, God made that. He's amazing. And uh, if we try and be cleverer than him and sort of question him too much, uh, beware, verse 13, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. Um, and the schemes of the wily are brought to a quick end. But we know he saves the needy, so humble yourself and uh, turn uh, to him. And then link to this, uh, verse 17 to the end, be submissive, be submissive. God is disciplining you, Job, and you're blessed. Beginning of James 1, you're blessed when you suffer. God's got a purpose in the suffering, and uh, he's disciplining you for your sin, so turn back to him, be submissive to him, come back to him, and then you will, you will be blessed greatly. The huge promises in verse uh, 22 to, to 27 that are given uh, to Job. And, and 27, Eliphaz isn't saying, oh, this is just my advice. He's saying, look, bang on, I'm, I'm the man. I know, behold, this we have searched out. It is true here. And no, it is for your good. Like we've got the authoritative way of understanding the world. This is it. So um, uh, uh, trust me, trust 
uh, us. Well, there are lots of things that are true about this uh, this, uh, this passage, aren't there? Um, but um, we know from the end of the book of Job that uh, God's verdict on the uh, comforters is that they didn't speak what was right about God, whereas Job did. So we've got to keep that in mind as we think about um, Eliphaz. And I think there's just two things maybe just to help us. One is that um, 5 verse 13 is the uh, one verse in this chapter that is quoted in the New Testament. So it's quoted in um, 1 Corinthians uh, 3 verse 19. Uh, so for it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise and their futile. Paul quotes that in his letter to the Corinthian church. It's about the wisdom of the world. He's just talked about for the wisdom of this world ha, is folly to God. So Eliphaz the Temanite, he's actually, so Paul's kind of being ironic here. He's quoting Eliphaz, but Eliphaz is a representation of the wisdom of the world that says that God is great and God is just and do good and it will go well with you and do bad. Um, you, you won't but this is folly to God because he's making people righteous through the death of Jesus we need the innocent to suffer for there to be a way for us to be right with God Jesus is the innocent sufferer the one who did good but was punished so back in uh, in Job 4 verse 7 remember who who that was innocent ever perished well, supremely, it was Jesus, and Job was a kind of foretaste of Jesus, because God's plans to rescue the world involve innocent suffering. In 4 verse 17, can mortal man be in the right before God? Yes, because of this great plan, the wisdom of God, which is foolishness to the world. Uh, that is how that can uh, happen and so you know yes five verse one call now is there anyone who will answer you to which of the holy ones will you turn well to jesus he's the one we can turn to who who bridges the gap uh, between earth and heaven between our fragile natures and our sin uh, and god so that's a problem eliphaz is displaying the wisdom of the world rather than the wisdom of god he doesn't understand the place that god has for s suffering his worldview is too narrow and sort of too neat. But the other kind of problem comes at the end of the chapter, uh, end of the, the section, chapter five, when basically Eliphaz is offering Job um, all that he's lost. He's offering him great blessings. But that was just kind of what Satan challenged God about and said, well, look, Job, of course he loves you because you bless him. We're going to take away the blessings and then we'll see whether he really does love you and trust you. So it's really important that God is glorified and that uh, our faith is tested. That matters. It's for God's glory and for uh, uh, our good. Um, we're saved by faith. Faith involves trusting God. It involves wrestling and, and persevering and keeping going. Whereas what Eliphaz offers is just basically kind of you obey, get blessings. Just that uh, life in a sense without that waiting without that uh, that faith so i don't know if that's a uh, uh, help i hope it just gives you a bit of a, a bit more detail a bit more kind of help to get into those passages and uh, um, we'll come to uh, chapter six and seven next <laughs>